Hello, John. Uh, John Bidolf playing here at Kumi Beats. You're flying the flag there. It's a nice looking T-shirt. Excellent. <laughs> um, this time, last year, we streamed some of your stuff and you were playing saxophone and modular. Right. But the, the, set, the setup seems to have changed a little bit. You've got more stuff. Yes, absolutely. Um, the sax is in its case. And what I've done for today is to put together some of the sounds that I actually use in my professional life now, which is working with people with autism. And um, so some of the sounds that I'm using tonight I've actually used with some of the people that I'm, I'm actually working with, um, both creatively and expressively and, and therapeutically as well. Which oh, right, is so you're using kind of like sound therapy as part absolutely, of what you do. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, one of the things that is wonderful, I have, um, I have two of this particular device and uh, one of the things that the people that I work with can do is to sit on the other side of it to me with their own uh, keyboard and choose the modules that they want to put into it, explore the sounds, um, explore it through the keyboard if they wish, but I also use some uh, non-keyboard interfaces as well. So it's, uh, and how is this? Because while I was talking to Mylar Melodies, this fell off its stand and we were terrified, but it looks like it's all all right. Well, the only thing that um, came to grief were two or three patch leads, and I have to say, uh, hats off to Waldorf for making a fairly robust <laughs> device. And no key snaps, <laughs> no, which is the main absolutely. thing. absolutely. <laughs> so I, I noticed you've also got a Matrix Brute as well, which is yeah. uh, a fairly major addition to any setup, right? It certainly is, yes. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I'm, I'm fortunate that I've uh, got one of, I've got a Moog Model B from the old days, um, and I had a listen to this and had a, a look at... Uh, some of the possibilities with it and the, and the matrix is just amazing. I mean, the depth that you can go into controlling sound, which is what really interests me. I'm particularly interested in sound quality. And you've got some very unusual uh, kind of devices here. I don't know uh, what, I, what to it looks make like, of it. Well, it looks a bit like a Victorian instrument of torture, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> sort of sort of inverted. Are they bass, are they bass strings? Uh, various guitar strings. And um, I, I don't know any much more about the technical detail of it, but this is uh, a folk tech luminous garden. Um, <laughs> their That's name, not awesome mine. Name, awesome <laughs> their name, not mine. <laughs> it's a great name. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I love accessing sound, even though way, way back when I was um, kind of so-called classically trained as a musician. But I actually, and, and you know, I, I play the piano a little bit. But I love accessing sound and controlling sound through different interfaces and devices. Wow! And you've got a, a fairly sizable modular rig here as well. I mean, what? So how are you kind of running it when you when you press go or begin things? How are you doing? Have you got kind of drones that you fade up, or are you playing sequences, or or, or all of? All of. A um, little bit of everything, really. I mean, I, I've, I've tried to include some of the sounds that interest me, interest the people that I work with as examples. Um, and and I'm, I'm particularly keen on, on the way that the modular actually enables me to explore sound in real detail and, and examine it. Um, I suppose, you know, to go back to my musical training, I'm interested in tone quality and timbre and that kind of thing. Right, and so, um, wow, so what's the most recent addition to this uh, particular setup? If we can find it in all the most um, of this, it's a very impressive rig. Yeah, probably the uh, Make Noise Morphogene, which I particularly like. And I really like their new design, it's lovely. Fabulous, it. yeah. it's a fabulous interface, and uh, again, the way that it allows me to control sounds. Um, and, and even field recordings, I mean, I'll go out and make some... Uh, sounds and I've got one young man that I work with who who loves the London Underground and takes a small recorder and records the sounds on that we put it through that and he's absorbed for hours wow. which, which is amazing and so I noticed you've got a couple of uh, circadian rhythms here is that kind yeah. of driving the whole clock and trigger sure the side of things? yeah that, that's that's looking after the the percussive side of things for me and and uh, whilst you know I, I'm I haven't got a sort of franchise with folk tech. I mean, I, I, it runs some of their, their modules, their matter module, which is uh, great. And so uh, do you, do you, uh, are you kind of creating a kind of woven texture of individual voices, or are you trying to run a polyphony or, how, or use counterpoint, or how do you tend to...? Well, like your question before about the kind of musical nature of my stuff, I suppose it's a little bit of everything, really. Um, I, I, I don't try and stick to one thing, and, and the delight of modular... Um, is that it uh, enables me to access sounds in, in ways that obviously in the past I wasn't able to do at all. So does each kind of section uh, or each sort of voice path represent different aspects to different movements of stuff that you're doing or are you kind of just 
playing it by ear, I mean, and improvising. Um, there is certainly some improvisation in my set, and, and there are some pre-planned episodes, if you like, which I hope are... Um, a link together. I mean, that was my intention. It'll be down to the listener whether or not they uh, they decide that they seem linked or not. But that that was that was absolutely my intention. Excellent. I mean, I'm trying to remember what else was different from last year. I'm sure that I remember something in Iraq. Uh, I think you because you were using the e week, weren't you? Or, That's or, right. Yeah, yeah. I, I used a, a, a synth, a wind synth, last year, and uh, I decided today was just a day for uh, for mainly modular stuff and to. So is this something that you bring uh, that you perform with regularly, or did you sort of decide what to bring for this gig just to sort of and, and, and work with the gear that you were bringing? Well, I, I sent a picture of the gear I intended to bring um, to Cymru Beats on Thursday, and they said, "Could you please reduce the footprint of the?" Uh, so this is the small. So, so this is, is the. the I, I have. Um, to all intents and purposes, downsized since Thursday evening. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, and, uh, and, and so in terms of the sort of themes and that sort of thing, you presume, are you sort of playing those on the main keyboards? Is that the kind uh, of there's a little bit of a melodic input on the keyboards, and I'm using one keyboard to uh, to control again the tone quality of a, an arpeggiated figure. On and so well. uh, presumably you love for transposition and that sort of thing, right? Well, John, I'm really. Uh, where can people find your music and uh, and about you? Where's the best place um, for people to look? John Biddulph, my, my, my name, uh, dot .com or dot .co.uk. Excellent. Well, I have a great gig and thank you for thank speaking. Thank you very much, Nick. Thank you.